the SkyDrive. This is a three-person EV toll. It's a Toyota affiliated startup. You're saying aircraft supposed to have like 45 minutes of extra fuel, right? Well, roughly that, yeah. So th this is going to be kind of a challenge. It has a range of nine to 25 miles. You're not going very far. Well, I'm guessing you're looking at something north of two to $300,000 at least. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I'm back today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going today, Bill? Going well. So we're going to start out talking about this company called SkyDrive. Now, this is the first I've heard of them. And SkyDrive's got a cool-looking vehicle. Now, of course, we're EV World, so this means everything from... Uh, Bikes to buses and beyond. Yes. It gets interesting to see what we come up with sometimes. Here we go. Here, here's our latest electric vehicle right here, the SkyDrive. It's one pilot, two passengers. This is a three-person EV toll. It's a Toyota-affiliated startup. It's crossed a major hurdle on the path to bringing flying cars to everyday life. It's officially been issued a G1 certif certification for the Jap Japan Civil Aviation Bureau a critical step between full, full approval and commercial use. Now, this is designed to be a personally owned vehicle. They're showing this off at the 2025 World Expo in Osaka. They have a shared blueprint for what the aircraft must prove in order to safely enter commercial service. You know, it'll be interesting to see how this may play. The, you know, normally, I understand aircraft are supposed to have like 45 minutes of extra fuel, right? Well, roughly that, yeah. Yeah, so th this is going to be kind of a challenge. This is a completely battery-operated aircraft. It's 38 feet long and has 12 electric rotors, carries one pilot, two passengers, and flies up to 62 miles per hour. has a range of 9 to 25 miles on a single charge. You're not going very far. That, that's, that's, a, that's a quick trip. Quick urban hops. Uh, shrinks commutes, cuts traffic, avoids air pollution. It's battery powered, has no tailpipe emissions, but nine to 25 miles. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, you got to be able to charge your both ends, right? Well, you'd have to charge your both ends. Yeah. You know, uh, having, having a little bit of, you know, this past weekend, for example, I was building, I was helping build an airplane. So I know what goes into building an airplane. Um, and what do you do with five to 25 miles? I mean, that's not what, you know, I guess if you're living in, in Tokyo and you want to get from one suburb of Tokyo to another suburb of Tokyo, although they really have a good subway system, but you just don't want to deal with all the people or, or whatever. I guess that makes sense. But you know, if you wanted, if you want to build your own airplane, you're looking somewhere starting around at least 30,000 and probably some of the ones that are showing up in Oshkosh this week, you're starting $60,000 to build it. And you're looking at probably at least two, three, five, ten 10 years to build this thing. Right. I mean, like I said, I know what it takes to, to drill holes for rivets and put Clecos in and take Clecos out and, it's long. It's a laborious process. So who's going to afford among the general public this kind of a, this kind of a vehicle? Well, I guess you could have like a, a the version of a black car. You know, there's a, a that that's their their job is you just hey pick me up at you know the Tokyo hotel and fly me over to you know the airport outside of Tokyo, whatever. Yeah, but with that range, you're not given a whole lot of rides unless this has a battery swap in. No, no, you're not. You're not getting. You're you're not getting. But of course, that's a function of the battery too. So if they're partnered with Toyota, I would assume that they're probably hoping that they're going to have access to to Toyota's uh, solid state battery once it begins to you know get into the uh, uh, production system. So. So I'm a little skeptical. Now, that being said, Beta, which has something that looks very similar to this, uh, is at Oshkosh, and then, uh, they, I saw them landing, 
and uh, you know, taking off uh, from Oshkosh uh, here last yesterday, I think it was, or Sunday. Um, so we're seeing those things starting to make inroads that are the same model beta is making is touring Europe right now and flying between various European cities. So we're getting there. Um, and I can see why Toyota probably thinks this is this is the future, um, although I can't see it being a very, very big market or something like that. And you're probably looking, well, I'm guessing you're looking at something north of two to three thousand three hundred thousand dollars at least. Probably. Yeah. I, I'm just looking at that and it's like, well, you know, maybe it's not so sophisticated to build. Well, it, it the the beauty, of course, is that it's electric. Right, so you're gonna have you're gonna have to do maintenance on it, but I think with the ele- just the electric motors, twelve of them, boy, that's a lot. Well, I guess some of that's for safety in case uh, one of them fails. Yeah, you want redundancy, obviously, uh, in, in there. Yeah, it's exciting to watch this. I just think that sometimes the press gets a little over over the top in some of what they think this technology can do. It, no. Yeah, I'm just saying it's. Uh... I just look at it though that nine to twenty five mile range. I mean, shoot, that's not now. I guess if you're talking Manhattan, that's plenty, right? If you're hopping from building to building, sure, yeah. But then there's going to be a limit to how many rooftops you can land on, right? Well, yeah, exactly. How many rooftops are there? It's it's one thing for one helicopter to come in and land and then take right back off after dropping somebody off. Um, this is a little different. This doesn't really have the range to be. Going to this isn't something you would be using like Ubering people around, not with that kind of range. No, no. The clip you just saw was part of our live podcast. If you enjoyed it, don't miss out. Join us every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday right here on EV World News. We stream not just on YouTube, but also on Facebook and X, so you can catch us wherever you prefer. If you found this content valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, and to share to help us grow. If you'd like to support our work, please consider becoming a YouTube member. It really helps us bring you the latest EV news and insights. I'll see you in the next one.